Hello everyone. My name is Ambassador Eleni Kunalakis, Lieutenant Governor of the State of California. Having served as the U.S. Ambassador to Hungary under President Barack Obama, I am very familiar with the important role played by American Chambers of Commerce around the world, not just in promoting business ties, but also for providing a forum and community in distant lands for American citizens and companies. Gathering with friends and contacts at the AmCham in Budapest always felt like coming home. So I'm delighted to be speaking to you, the members of 28 AmChams from across the Asia Pacific region. I can think of very few other regions of the world that are more important today as we gather at the beginning of the Joe Biden Kamala Harris administration and as our country begins to see the light at the end of the COVID-19 tunnel. It is fair to say that how the United States, working with our like-minded friends and allies, chooses to act in the Asia Pacific region moving forward is the key question that will shape global international relations in the 21st century. The theme of this year's summit is business transformation. And I am here to tell you that no one does transformation better than we do in California. It's been two years since Governor Newsom and I were sworn in and see, since he appointed me to be his representative for international affairs and trade development. And it has been our goal to elevate California's voice on the world stage to promote our values and interests. Of course, no one anticipated when we took office that a global pandemic would threaten the very lives of our citizens and lead us to take drastic steps to protect our people and our economy. Never in history have our leaders been in a situation where we've had to willfully shut down daily life, work, school, and travel. But as a science-based state, we listened to our public health officials when they sounded the alarm about COVID-19. Governor Newsom became the first in the country to issue a statewide stay-at-home order. It was the right thing to do and save thousands of lives. Right now, he is focused on ensuring that the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines will put us on a course to normality. But as we strive to build back better, our new normal will look different than it did before the pandemic. While COVID-19 has changed how we work, the three major international priorities Governor Newsom and I established for California remain the same. They are immigration, trade, and combating climate change. Our relationships with the countries of the Asia Pacific region are a key component in each of these fields. Those who know me know how proud I am of California's diversity. 27% of us are foreign born and half of us, myself included, have at least one immigrant parent. Our diversity makes us stronger, younger, more innovative and more resilient and has been a primary driver of California's economic success. California welcomes people from around the world who come as students, business people, entrepreneurs, tourists, asylum seekers, and of course, immigrants. And since the founding of our state, immigrants from the Asia Pacific have played a critical role in creating our diverse and welcoming society. In fact, 5 million Californians are of Asian descent. That's 12.5% of our total population and one third of our nation's estimated 15 million Asian Americans. We also have over 3.3 million green, heart, green card holders in our state. The most H-1B visa recipients in the country also live here. In 2019, over 161,000 foreign students attended California's world-class public and private universities making us the leading U.S. state for international study. The majority of these students came from Asia, with 42% from China, 12.6% from India, and 5.4% from South Korea. We hope to see an increase in these numbers now that the Biden-Harris administration has begun. 
The second international priority I'd like to talk about is trade, which has helped to make California the fifth largest economy in the world. One out of five California jobs were associated with trade and tourism in 2019. For years now, California has ranked first in the country in exports and first in foreign direct investment. In 2019, 730,000 California jobs were related to foreign direct investment, generating an estimated $65 billion in wages. And that same year, 18 million international visitors came to our state, spending an estimated $28 billion at hotels, restaurants, and shops, resulting in millions of dollars in tax revenues for local governments. Because of our location on the Pacific Rim, a significant percentage of our trade in FDI and tourism has come from Asia. The Long Beach and Los Angeles Port Complex is the largest in the United States and is the primary gateway for U.S. trade with Asia. While exports were down in 2020 at the port, imports are projected to significantly surpass last year's numbers. Overall, exports from California were down a little more than 10% in 2020, far less than projected in March, and imports were down only 3%. When it comes to declining exports to China, it's worth remembering that some of this is due to tariffs imposed by the Trump administration. We completely agree that putting pressure on countries to change uncompetitive trade practices is necessary. And also, that human rights must always be at the top of our diplomatic agenda. But we are hopeful that the Biden-Harris administration will engage in more constructive and comprehensive trade policies. We will keep urging solutions that will bring more California products to other countries, more electric vehicles, our number one export, more manufactured goods, and of course, more wine, cheese, and tree nuts. The third and final of California's international priorities is also the one where our leadership means the most, combating climate change. When the Trump administration announced its withdrawal from the Paris Climate Accord, Nobel Prize winning scientist Mario Molino said, the global community is looking to California as one of the world's largest economies to take the lead. We did. At home, we have proven that we can grow our economy while slashing emissions. Governor Newsom successfully defended our state's authority to set our own emissions policies and our cap and trade program. He struck deals with automakers to meet more stringent emission standards and set a goal of requiring all new cars to be zero emission vehicles by 2035. We are on track and more committed than ever to our goal of powering our state with 100% carbon-free electricity and achieving carbon neutrality by 2045. On the global stage, California's leadership on climate remains among the most steadfast, stable, and reliable in the world. Accordingly, my first official trip abroad as Lieutenant Governor was to China, where I represented California at the Belt and Road Conference in Beijing in April 2019. The sole purpose of my trip was to specifically highlight our ongoing work with China to advance environmental protection. In January of last year, I led a delegation to India, where I spoke at the Racina Dialogues on Green Finance and met with the Minister of Environment, Forestry, and Climate Change. We are committed to sharing Californians' lessons and learning from others, having signed over 60 bilateral agreements and participated in numerous technical exchanges. So again, these three international priorities, immigration, trade, and climate will continue to be at the top of our agenda in 2021 and will be instrumental in transforming how we do business in California. I'd like to thank the AmCham's of Asia Pacific for inviting me to speak with you today. And I look forward to next year's summit when hopefully we will meet together in person.